This is question 8 from paper 3-1 from the June 2020 exams from Cambridge International. Up the top right of the screen, a card will bring you to the playlist of all my solutions for the other questions in this paper. And in the description below, you'll find a link to an image of this question, so I recommend you try the question before looking at my solution. Like a lot of questions, this question is both easy and hard. It's easy if you know how to do it, it's not that long or anything, but it's quite difficult uh, to know how to do it. Lots of students actually failed it. Lots of students uh, got low marks in it. The first problem is something that um, a GCSE student, a, a younger student, would actually be able to solve. They tell us that a certain curve that, uh, such that its gradient at a point is proportional to this. Now, that all, all that means is, say, this is not the bit the GCSE student would be able to know, but you should know that a gradient is dy dx. You'll get a mark for writing dy dx. And they tell you this. So the bit that a, um, a GCSE student would know is proportional. We learn about proportional when you're younger, but we don't remind you too much. It pops up in a few exam questions. So it might only get reminded just before your exams, the month or two when you're recapping, going over some past exam papers and stuff. But that's what it looks like. That's when, it, when they tell you something's proportional. And then what we can do with this is we can turn this into an equals. We can change this so it's dy dx, uh, dy dx is equal to y over x over uh, x multiplied by the square root of x. Once we uh, multiply it by some sort of constant, and we can name that anything you want, but I'll just go with k, it's uh, usually what we use. So that's got us from that bit of English they said to this equation to, well, maybe this is not an equation because it's not equals, to this equation here. So um, they also tell us that the curve passes through two points, uh, 1, 1, and 4, and E. Remember, E is a number. It's not a letter we don't know. It is a number. Put E to the power of 1 onto your calculator, and you, it'll tell you what it is. I think it's 2.7 or 1.7. I always forget. Um, dot, dot, dot. Lots of other numbers. It's like pi. It never ends. Okay, so by setting up and solving a differential equation, find the equation of the curve expressing y in terms of x. Now, uh, differential equations are really difficult. You'll do them if you go into college and do any maths. Students hate them. But in our course, they're always going to be simple versions of them. They're ne we're never going to have to set up general differential equations. So what we'll always have to just do is move all the x's to one side and all the y's to one side. That's all. Uh, remember to leave dy on, its, on the top row, leave dx on a top row, because we're going to use them. So if I go ahead and do that, uh, we'll, on the left we'll put dy, it's already there, and we'll move this y, which is 1 over y then. On the right, uh, we'll leave k out front. Uh, let's see, we'll have that'll be 1 over x uh, times square root of x, and dx will be left over here. All right, we do this because now we can integrate both sides. They're set up to be integrated now. And uh, let's do that. The integral of 1 over y dy will be equal to, let's put k outside. It's not involved in an integral. It's constant. The integral of, now, instead of writing um, x multiplied by the square root of x, let's, let's do that separately over here. x square root of x, well, that's it's the same as x times x to the power of a half. That's the same as, that's x to the power of 1 times x to the power of a half. That's the same as x to the power of 1 plus x to the power of a half, which is x to the power of 3 over 2. And uh, this is on the bottom row. So uh, 1 over, well, let me just do it here. 1 over x times square root of x is x to the power of 3 over 2 minus, minus 3 over 2. In fact, minus just moves it from the bottom to the top, or the top to the bottom. Um, just goes ahead and moves it. And then uh, multiply by dx here. So we can integrate both of these sides. The integral of 1 over whatever you're integrating by is a special case because we'd get divide by 0 if you try to do it normally. Well, let me do this one normally first and then we'll go back and write in what's here. So what we do is we add one number to this. We get x uh, add 1 minus 3 over 2 plus 1 minus 1 over 2. I recommend students put that in a calculator. Uh, minus 3 over 2 plus 1. So many students write uh, minus 5 over 2. They just get it the wrong way around. Let a calculator help you there. Um, so we add one number to this, and that new number we divide by. Minus a half. Um, plus some sort of constant. 
Uh, yeah, let me write in the constant here. And uh, on this side, the same thing happens. This is y to the power of minus 1, I guess. Add 1 to it, you get 0. And you end up dividing by 0. So that won't work over here. But we have a special case for it. We've, um, I haven't talked about it in a video yet, but actually maybe I have. Um, I'm not sure, I can't remember. But hopefully your teacher probably has. So the integral of 1 over x or 1 over y in this case is just a natural log of it, plus another constant. But I'll go ahead and uh, move this constant over here and we'll combine them together. Maybe this constant was c1, this constant was c2, and we'll add them together, or c2 minus c1 is equal to c. They, they're all made up constants. One constant will do you when you integrate it twice. Okay, so we get to uh, this. They wanted y equals. They want to express y in terms of x. So we're nearly there, we're not. That's a little bit of a lie. But if I just take e to both sides, um, so what I mean is e to the natural log y, they, they cancel each other. I'll go ahead and not bother writing them now. Uh, if you're doing this, uh, if you're doing a, a paper tree, I'm gonna assume you're able to do things like that. So e to the natural log y is just y is equal to e, all of this. So that's, oh, let's say, uh, divide by minus a half is the same as multiplying by minus two. So minus two k and um, x to the power of a half, let's put that in the bottom row again um, and put the square root back in. I don't care how you write this. I sometimes leave it as the minus a half. Um, I'll just leave it like this because lots of students write it like this. And then plus c. Remember, we're taking e of this entire thing. So this entire thing is the same. Just put it all to e. Okay, that's nearly it. They, they asked us to express y in terms of x. We have that. The only problem is, what's this k and c? We made it up, so we can't show the examiner our k and c here because they're letters we made up. The, the examiner would like us to put in the numbers. Um, if they, sometimes they let us leave letters if they give us the letters. But not in this case. But that's alright, because we have numbers here. We have lots of information up here. Remember what this is. This is x and y. So we know that y is equal to 1. And x is equal to 1 at the same time. So I can write 1 is equal to e minus 2k divided by 1. Our square root of 1 is 1. So that's nothing. Plus c. And then I can also write, uh, let, yeah, let me write it here. I can also write that e, I'm replacing this one now. Uh, let me put in a little line here. e is equal, so that's y is equal to e to the power of minus 2k over the square root of 4, which is 2 plus c. Now, what do you do here? It might, not, it might look scary to you, lots of these e's. This is actually a simple simultaneous equation. Because instead of 1, well, there's two ways to think of this. Um, you could say instead of 1, we could write e to the power of 0. And then it's just 0 is equal. Yeah, let me do this one this way. And I'll do this one the other way. They both could be done the same way, by the way. So, so th this will then become 0 is equal minus 2k plus c. That's the way I would do it. That's probably the quickest way. A more... A more um, formulaic way to do it, a, more, a way a computer could do it, or a student some, often likes to learn to do it, is just take the natural log of both sides. The natural log of e is 1, is equal, the natural log of e, again, is 1, it just destroys it. Destroys the e and leaves what's up here. So it destroys the e and leaves what's up here. Minus 2k over, oh, add uh, 2k over 2. Don't have to write all that, do I? 2 divides into 2, it's minus k plus c. Again, here, you could have taken, um, there's one there, you could have taken the natural log of both sides. The natural log of one is zero. The natural log of e to the power of something is just the something. So, so now look what we're left for. Simultaneous equation. I'll write them all on top of each other. Uh, one equals minus k plus c. Just a simultaneous equation. Yeah. Pretty simple one, in fact. Uh, so let's do this quickly. We'll get, uh, let's say, the bottom row minus the top row. So bottom row minus the top is 1 minus 0 is 1. And minus k minus minus 2k is plus k. And c minus c is 0. So k equals 1. There we go. k equals 1. That's one of our numbers. Put that into either one you want. Uh, I'll put it into the second one here. And we get 1 is equal to minus 1 plus c. Uh, move the 1 over. 
we'll get c is equal to 2. All right, there's those two numbers solved. And, uh, oh, the answer. Don't forget to write the answer down. So many students do this. The examiner will, might be generous to you here uh, because you wrote down this and you wrote this. But please, put them together. The exam asked you to write y equals. y is equal to e to the power of minus 2. What's k? k is 1. So we just put minus 2 over square root of x plus c. What is c? c is 2. Plus two. That is the correct answer for part A. And part A is eight marks out of nine. So it's really, this question is all about part A. And there, it was done in one board. And um, I, pro I could have done it quicker if I knew what I was doing, if I didn't have to explain it. But so many students got this wrong. So this was a low scoring question in the exam. So that's part A. For part B, uh, let me just make a little bit of room and I'll explain part B. I'll rub this bit out here. So part B asks us, uh, describe what will happen to Y when X tends towards infinity. Okay, so there's only one mark for this. So you're not meant to do lots of maths or anything. So just bear that in mind. So what happens to, and we know what Y is equal. Y is equal to this. So what happens to Y when X goes towards infinity? You can just write the answer down with like one line of English, but I'll show you how I like to write it down. I like to say what they get me, x goes to infinity, and I like to move my way down until I get what, where, where y goes. So let's see, uh, x, we're not interested in x, we're interested in square root of x. Well, that still goes to infinity. The square root of infinity is still infinity. We're not interested in the square root of x, we're actually interested in minus 2 divided by the square root of x. So what happens that? When square root of x goes to infinity, so minus 2 divided by a bigger and bigger and bigger number. Test it yourself. Minus 2 divided by 100. Minus 2 divided by 1,000. Minus 2 divided by a million. Stay going. Where is it going towards? Uh, you'll, you'll find that it'll always be a minus number will get closer and closer to zero. So we'll just write it as zero. Um, it will tend towards zero. That's fine to write. We're not interested in minus two divided by the square root of x. We're interested in minus two divided by the square root of x plus two. Now where does that go? We know this one goes towards zero. Well, zero plus two must go towards two. Um, and we're not interested in minus two divided by the square root of x plus two. We're interested in e to the power of all of that. So e to the power of minus 2 over square root of x plus 2. Where does that go? Well, we know that goes to 2. So this must go to e to the power of 2. And that is what y is. y is equal to this. This is y. So y goes towards e to the power of 2. That's, that's our full answer. You don't have to put that in a calculator. I'd recommend not putting in the calculator even. Because this is exactly right. Anything you put in the calculator, the calculator will have to round it off. And you'll get just close to being right. You'll get full marks either of those ways, I imagine. Um, yeah, if you write that down and then next write down y tends towards like 6 or whatever the number comes out to be. You'll get, you'll get full marks, I believe. Once you use three significant figures. But that is full marks for part B. y tends towards e to the power of 2 or e squared. Right, if you have any follow-up questions, this is a strange question for lots of students, but it comes up regularly enough. It comes up in most years, so you should learn how to do it. And once you learn how to do it, it's quite easy to do. Okay, thanks for watching and have a great day.